Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Poets and Quants' online MBA panel, The Student MBA Experience. Today, we're joined by current students and alumni from three elite programs, Georgetown McDonough, Baruch Zicklin, and UMass Eisenberg. I'm your host, Christy Bleizeffer of Poets and Quants, and please feel free to use the Q&A function to submit any questions you have for our panelists. I'll do my best to get to those at the end of the session. Well, let's get started by getting to know our esteemed panelists. If you would each introduce yourself um, with your current role, your MBA program, and a fun fact about yourself. And Amanda, let's start with you. Great. Thank you so much for having me today. So my name is Amanda Weiner. I'm a director of graduate admissions marketing technology for Georgetown University, actually. And I started the Flex MBA online program this past fall. I'm really enjoying it so far. Let's see, my fun fact about myself, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Avett Brothers, the band, but I did once thank them for writing a song about a girl with curls. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> and Nicole? Um, my name is Nicole Kirkland. Um, I have a bachelor's of science in clinical diagnostic sciences with an emphasis in nuclear medicine. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I work at Children's Medical Center Dallas as the lead nuclear medicine technologist there. Um, Fun fact about myself, um, in the spirit of music, because Beyonce just released her new album, I have attended all of Beyonce's concert series. I think there's been seven. I've gone to every single concert. Oh, so wow. That is quite, that's quite <laughs> an accomplishment, actually. <laughs> and uh, um, I may have missed it, but you were with the Zicklin program, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, Richard. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Richard Gould. Uh, thank you for having me today. Really looking forward to the conversation. Um, I am the co-founder of Oak and Argyle, which is a comprehensive um, government affairs consulting firm here. I'm also uh, the COO uh, of a, a new startup um, of a construction development company uh, called ESG Corp. Um, a little fun fact about myself to stay on the, the theme of music. Um, I've actually been a big fan of Pearl Jam since I was nine years old. And I've been to about 30 shows um, in my life and two more are coming in the fall. So I'm really excited. So shout out to Pearl Jam. If anyone's listening, <laughs> that's a big Pearl Jam fan. Thanks well, for- that's that's my era uh, aging myself. So um, <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about your where you went to your MBA or where you're on where you're at in that journey. So I went to the uh, UMass um, Eisenberg School of Management. I actually graduated last uh, spring. Uh, uh-huh. spring of 23 may uh may 23 um and yeah it was a really fun program um basically i want to get into into business at some point um my background was was government so i worked for um the state of massachusetts for about 15 years uh 11 of which were um at the massachusetts state house i worked on both sides of the aisle um i worked for two Mass- massachusetts house speakers um, and I was looking for something, you know, to to kind of um, to, you know, broaden my horizon a little bit yeah. um, and decided to go to Eisenberg um, and probably one of the best decisions I've made in my life. So very good. There I am. thank you very much. And thank you all for uh, taking the time today. It's it's really valuable to people um, researching their own MBA journeys. Um, Nicole, going back to you, tell us a you know, kind of walk us through your decision about um, deciding to uh, go for an online MBA. Were you considering other degree programs? And uh, what were some of those factors that led you to Zicklin? Yeah, um, I work 40 plus hours a week at my hospital. I take call at two different hospitals for after hour call. So um, my day to day schedule is pretty demanding. So I really needed an online MBA program. Um, that just fit best within my routine of the day. Um, Zicklin, I was really interested in um, because you can take one class at a time. It's yep. asynchronous and also synchronous. So a lot of the coursework is individual. Um, but there's also group elements still, which was really important to me. Um, so we get to spend a lot of time on Zoom classes. There's one class a week where our whole class, our whole cohort are together. And so you still have a sense of community. So that was important when I was looking for a a program. Right, absolutely. Richard, what were some of those factors that led you to Eisenberg? So uh, again, uh, you know, I had um, 
the government experience. Uh, I want to kind of learn about business and really get into the nitty gritty of how businesses, um, you know, thought how people in business thought, um, you know, I, I looked in about 2017 about going to get my master's. I looked at an MPA, MPA program. Um, but I think the MBA was really, you know, kind of where I was looking at, um, late 2019, I was looking to go in, like do it in person, um, program, but then obviously COVID hit in 2020 and kind of threw the wrench and everything. And then, um, in 2021, um, again, I, it was kind of a transition period. My wife was pregnant. Um, I was working full time. Um, and I looked at the online uh, program that UMass had and, you know, I thought it was perfect for me. Um, and I, I give credit to, <laughs> to my wife who basically at the time when she was pregnant, she's like, you're doing this. Uh, so, you know, shout out to my wife for, for allowing me to, to go through the process of, of joining uh, Eisenberg and, you know, f fulfilling the program. Yeah. What, what, what was perfect about Eisenberg? What were those factors that made you choose that school? It was one of the top ones, uh, top online programs out there. Um, it was a very diverse, um, pro, you know, program in student body as well. You, all my classes, there's people from around the world, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, I'm from Boston, so I, I don't really get out of Boston too much. And what I do, it's, you know, for vacation and stuff like that, but to kind of get different standpoints of how people are thinking in the world and, you know, throughout the States, um, that was a big driver for me to, to pick UMass, um, was that diverse program that they had. Absolutely. Um, Amanda, tell us about your kind of decision to pursue uh, online MBA. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking through my next step and definitely considering local MBA programs. So I work remotely from Ohio, actually. So I was looking at programs here and I thought initially I was thinking I wanted the in-person experience because I don't have a business background. So I was thinking that when I'm learning these difficult concepts like accounting and finance that were completely new to me, um, I had it kind of in my head that I would need that in-person interaction. And then as I was mulling that over, Georgetown introduced their Flex MBA online program. And as they were introducing it, I remember all of these pieces just clicked where they said, for example, classes are like 8 p.m. to 9.20 and we have asynchronous content as well. Um, and I have two little kids. So I thought, oh, that would be great. Like less time in class. I can still get that. I'm getting a top tier MBA program from Georgetown. Um, but still getting to have that like in person, I guess, uh, on Zoom interaction with the professors and classmates, but also getting to do some of it on my time because my day can be a little crazy with little kids and full time work and everything that comes with that. So um, as the yeah, every little piece they shared about it, it just clicked. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I can do this. Um, yeah. And that's how I ended up here. So, yeah, it was great. All the pieces aligned. <laughs> Were you already working um, at Georgetown? Is that kind of why you went you went with that school? Yeah, I had been working. So I've been with Georgetown for 11 years. So I've been here for a long time, worked in D.C. for a while, and then kind of moved back closer to home to Ohio and work remotely now. So um, I actually was considering more schools in Ohio, like local schools outside of Georgetown, because like I said, I was thought I in my head, I had it that I needed that in-person piece. Um, but then when Georgetown announced our program, then it sort of changed my mind. They swayed me away from that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Well, Richard, let's kind of get into a little bit deeper about the learning experience for students. Talk about the course load, flexibility, um, you know, group work versus, individ versus um, individual work. Um, anything that kind of gives an idea about what it's like to be a student at uh, Eisenberg. So uh, again, with the the online program, and it's you know it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, I was you know a full time uh, employee um, at the state. I was uh, expecting a newborn. Um, the flexibility of the on the online program at Eisenberg uh, allowed me to manage the the coursework um, around my schedule, which was great. Um, and you know, I could come home, uh, and, you know, study at, at night, which was great. I mean, it was long days, but it, it was okay. You know, cause I could still at night come home, you know, eat dinner with my wife and then, you know, kind of do my work. Um, and with the course load, it, it was great because I could pick the classes. I, I personally finished my program in under two years. That's what I, I want to do. Um, so I kind of look, you know, pack my my course uh, load a lo little more than than you know folks usually do, but again, it accommodated my my you know my job, so it was great. And as far as the the group work and the um, individual work, 
uh, Eisenberg was great because it was it kind of it was very balanced uh, with group projects and it you know it helps you collaborate with with different folks and you know kind of built your network. But also at the same time, when I wanted to do my own kind of thing, I, I could. So the Eisenberg program, you know, really emphasizes that, and it, you know, it's a great thing, uh, you know, for the program. Yeah, yeah. Um, Amanda, what's what's the learning experience been like at uh, uh, McDonough? Yeah, so we have a sort of uh, the way it works is that you do some asynchronous content on your own, and then you meet together in class from eight to nine twenty. Some of our electives are full, uh, like six thirty to nine twenty. But for the core classes, you've got a combo of asynchronous and then the Zoom content, which I really enjoyed because I like getting that classroom experience. I like seeing the professors in person. You can get those questions clarified and also seeing your classmates, which has been fun. What's also cool about our program is that we get to do residencies in person. So we did a week introduction in DC to meet everybody. And I had a blast during that week. So my group, we do group projects together. And we all said as soon as we met that it felt like we've known each other for way longer than a couple of weeks. So really sort of intense bonding experience, but it was a blast and really fun to get to meet people outside of Zoom. Um, because then you just, you, you make those connections. So when you do do breakout rooms in class and that kind of thing, you already know these people. So I really enjoyed that. Um, big emphasis on group work. So we do have a lot of group projects and then a lot of projects are, you can collaborate with your peers on it. So again, not coming from a business background, I've appreciated that because, um, you know, I can work together on an accounting project to get a little bit of help yeah. from people who have more experience. So I'm learning from my peers as well as in the classroom, which has been huge for me. So um, I'm really enjoying that piece and, and having a lot of fun with it. Oh, great. And Nicole, how about at Zicklin? What's that learning experience like? So each course is around seven weeks. Um, the classes kind of run Wednesdays to Wednesdays. Wednesdays are our online Zoom courses. They're about an hour and a half. Um, what I really like about the program is the Zoom kind of always starts a little early. So we tend to like to log on early in my cohort because we like to chat. Yeah. Um, before a class, just to brainstorm workplace dilemmas that people are having or some people had some supplemental readings that they really enjoyed this week that they found on their own. We kind of like to share and kind of powwow about that. Um, there is individual classwork. Most of the times the due dates are before class starts on Wednesday. So you really do have the flexibility to pace your own self. Um, some classes are more reading intensive versus others, but we've also had some classes where um we watch movies and we kind of break down what the movie is kind of saying. So that that's kind of fun too. Um, there's case studies that we do about real companies and it's always really exciting to learn um, what's happened because the case studies can sometimes take place in like 2016. You want to know like what happened to Steve today? You know, right. where is he at? And we learn the answer in class. So um, what I really like is a lot of the things I've learned in my class um, during the week, I applied to my work day the next day. Like it's immediate. What I learned, I can apply to my own life, which is really interesting and fun to me. It keeps it exciting. Um, but there is always also a group element component to all the courses. Even statistics had a group project, which was kind of interesting. Um, and in my cohort, I think I have probably around 30 students. So it's kind of fun to mix and match and see what group you're going to end up with. It's always fun to end up with some of your friends that you worked in the past class before. And everyone has a different uh, profession. So some of the group projects, if it's a little bit of a weakness, like um, we have financial analysts, you know, people are financial analysts in our class. We have healthcare administrators in our course. So we all kind of are able to brainstorm together to figure out, you know, different topics. So it's been a really strong supportive community. And that was one of the things that I was concerned with when I was looking at online was, you know, well, I feel alone, you know, is it going to be, you know, impersonal, but that's really not the case. Yeah. So it's been wow. wonderful. Yeah. I think that that's probably a concern for a lot of, um, you know, people that are considering whether they want an in-person or online course, that's probably certainly encouraging. Um, Amanda, you know, a lot of times people go to an MBA because they've really got like kind of a specific role or career path in mind, but do you want to kind of talk about some of those 
um, you know, softer skills, leadership skills that the business school, you know, is also, you know, critical um, in instilling it through the program? Yeah, that's a great question. So I know for our curriculum so far, we've had a lot of focus on presentations. So if that's something you haven't had in the past, you're getting a lot of experience with that. Um, having that presence, how to do, you know, like an executive summary of information. So instead of, I think some of us, I know my, me, certainly I tend to be ver verbose. So, you know, how can we do a case write up, uh, like Nicole was saying, in one page uh, to condense that information and make it really succinct, getting it to the right people. So I think that's a big one. So those communication skills, the presentation, the presence that you're getting from that, and like you mentioned, just working with so many different people. So you've got breakout rooms, you've got group projects, we've had different groups so far in our program. So getting to see different styles of how people work together. So for example, on the case studies, my first group, we like to have meetings. So we would meet on Zoom, we would work on the project together. My second group does it all through a Google Doc. You know, they just want to do comments to each other and back and forth. And so just seeing how different groups of people work together. And it's not that one way is right or wrong. Um, just that people have different styles and you can kind of work with that. So I think that's been uh, influential. Yeah, just seeing how different pe groups of people work together has been cool. Yeah, and something you're definitely going to have to use as you go forward. Every group is different. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Nicole, what are uh, what can you say about some of those, you know, leadership soft skills that you that that you're learning? Yeah, I had a professor say um, at the beginning of the course, like, you may not remember all the terms of what I teach you, but you're going to remember the way I made you think in this class. And I think that pretty much sums up a lot of Zicklin's um, learning style is the knowledge is compounded each week in each lesson plan. And um, we've learned different corporate strategies and that's a big focus in the program is critical thinking and recognizing opportunities for leadership um, personally, but also for your own company in the future or any role that you're serving in company. So those are kind of some highlights um, that they focus on in our program. Yeah, very good. And uh, Richard. So yeah, the two the two biggies are definitely um, strategic thinking. Um, Eisenberg really emphasized, um, you know, strategic thinking. It was great. The professors were also great, and they you know they really pushed folks on to think outside the box. And you know that's the reason why I I chose uh, Eisenberg was because they had a, a great line of professors who would kind of you know promote being an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, and, and those having those skills basically used in every day that I, you know, since I've graduated, I pretty much apply. Um, I, if I didn't go to Eisenberg, I probably wouldn't have started my own business uh, yeah. and probably wouldn't try to help out a startup as well. Um, so that strategic thinking is something that, you know, really, you know, kind of stuck with me when, when I, um, when I left Eisenberg and the other one was communication. When I was at the state house, I would kind of just think, um, uh, and just go, uh -huh. Eisenberg made me, you know, kind of communicate a little better with folks and that, you know, the, the group work really helped that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think those two are the biggies, the strategic thinking and the communication. Yeah. So, uh, speaking about your business, is that something you started, you know, while you were at Eisenberg or you came? So to it was in the, it was in the process. Um, I was thinking I would, I left the state house. I went to a construction development company um and while i was there and you know while i was going through the program i thought why not start my own business uh and kind of made the leap uh it we we it's actually a business to start with my wife uh and i we started in june of last year so it was right after but it was kind of be, you know percolating a little bit um and i left the uh, you know my former company and then started the new thing. So, uh, you know, again, it's it's a credit to to the on the online program at at, Eisen, at Eisenberg uh, was the reason why you know why we did that. So, great, great. Well, good luck um, as you continue. Let's talk about what do you think is the has been the biggest hallmark of your experience so far? What you know, what are you going to remember, or what's had the greatest impact you know on you personally or professionally? So, uh, I, I'm a big people person, and the the one big thing that my program taught me was, uh, you know, the people around you. Uh, my advisor, Joanna was a, was one of those people that had a really big impact on me. Um, and basically was my saving grace, you know, throughout the whole time I was at Eisenberg. Um, she was always there to give me advice on things, you know, what courses to take, um, and you know, how to really balance my schedule with everything going on. Um, and I was really persistent on graduating last May. Uh, so I kind of accelerated a little bit. 
And I think she thought I was crazy, but uh, <laughs> she was there to kind of tell me, hey, this is what's going to happen. Uh, you know, you may it may be a little difficult. Uh, it's okay if you, you know, want to step back a little bit. But I went through with it and, um, you know, it, it, it just she was a great help. And that was the, the really big uh, hallmark um, moment, I guess, was this, you know, at the end um, of my program, her just being there for me when I needed it. So um, thank you, Joanna. Oh, that's that's very nice. Uh, Nicole, so we're talking about the case studies. Yeah, those are really exciting for me. Um, we've learned about different corporations that we're really familiar with, like Lego and Coca-Cola, Tylenol. My yeah. favorite personally was Trader Joe's. Um, <laughs> I'm a big Trader Joe's shopper. So I was hurt to learn that they're posing as a small business and they're not. So um, those have been really exciting. So those are hallmarks of kind of that I take with me because a lot of those companies that we're so familiar with as the consumers to learn the insider's perspective, um, all companies have different like consumer bases, but they're all kind of built the same. So you can kind of take away different chunks from each company and kind of imagine what you would do in that role, even right. if that company is not like yours that you're currently serving. So that's been really fun. Yeah. Have you, do you remember any kind of things that you took from the cases right back to your, your job? Actually, yes. Yeah. So um, we do huddles at my job now. Um, so Lego had kind of brainstorming sessions that people kind of, they encouraged everyone to be a, a builder. So everyone kind of be their own construction worker, kind of build up the company. And so I brought that to my manager. And so we kind of have our own version of, we call them balloons. So we kind of talk and say, lead our own departments and kind of huddle together to share facts. So that's been something cool. Yeah, great. Uh, Amanda, what, what about the Hallmark experience so far at McDonough? Yeah, for me, for sure, it's the people. So uh, my cohort, we're divided up into study groups. So the first study group I had in the fall was incredible. We instantly clicked. We're really close friends. We WhatsApp all the time. It's probably super obnoxious to my family, but we just talk all the time and they're super supportive um, throughout the program. You know, we remind each other of deadlines, things like that. We're there for help if we need it. So I couldn't do this without them. They're incredible. They're so much fun. I'm so excited for our next residency in the summer. We already booked our hotels at the same hotel so we can all hang out the entire time. Um, so we're just super close and have uh, a blast together. So yeah, they're definitely the hallmark. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like you you all are getting, you know, to get to know your students and and um, have kind of a build the community even from online, which, which is something that might surprise some um, people considering this degree. Um, so Richard, like what advice um, do you have for someone considering an online MBA kind of genuinely and maybe considering one at uh, Eisenberg? Uh, honestly, I would just say go for it. Um, you know, people think that online you, you don't get as much as, as an in-person, but I don't think that's true. Um, and I really wish I, you know, I started the MBA journey a little bit sooner, but, you know, things kind of got in the way and, you know, I, I hesitated a little bit, um, but in the end, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have people around me that really push me and I just went for it. So if you're out there listening, um, you know, go just, just do it. Just, just get your, you know, go get your, your MBA online. Uh, and if you, you know, you really want to just go to UMass, uh, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great uh, program. So again, just, just go for it. Very good. Uh, Amanda, how about you? Yeah, that's um, I'm trying to think my best piece of advice. I mean, I guess I would just echo that, you know, just go for it. I think, um, you know, I, I think there's still some of that lingering, like, will it be the same? Will the courses be as rigorous? You know, what will it look like? So I would say reach out to the schools, get in the platforms, have them explain to you exactly what you'll be doing. Um, and know that you will still get that community piece uh, from the program. So if that's something that you want and you're excited to get that, you can still engage with your class and you'll still get that. So, um, you know, whether it's through a residency or maybe some other program that other schools have, you're still able to get a community feel and still connect with your class uh, despite being remote. Yeah, very good. And uh, Nicole, do you have any advice? Yeah, mine would just be a stay disciplined. Um, life happens and schedules get busy, but just make sure you're consistently making the time to do your assignments. 
Um, but not just do the assignments, but really go deep in what the meaning behind those assignments are, because it really is, you get out of the class, the effort that you put in. Um, it's not one of those degrees where if you do the assignment and you turn it in, and you know, that's kind of it. Um, a lot of them are supposed to be thought provoking. So to take <laughs> the time and actually put forth the effort that's required to take away the knowledge that you're supposed to get from the readings is important. Um, in regards to Zicklin, it's been a wonderful program. Um, we similarly, you can take one class at a time, which is what I'm doing. So I can kind of put the focus that I need for my life and for school. So I kind of have a good work-life balance still. Um, you can also take two classes um, during the summers. And I think you can take two classes going on into your courses. So um, if you are trying to get your MBA kind of quicker, um, you're able to do that. You have the individual portion, so you still are kind of responsible. You have the group work option. It's not a ton of group work. I know people are like, oh, no, group work. It's the worst, but it's really not. I've actually really enjoyed it. And that was kind of the perspective I had. I was like, oh my gosh, every class is going to have a group assignment. This is going to be something, but I really <laughs> like it. And you're going to really like it too. And um, the cohort is something really special because you get to stay with your classmates through the whole program, which has been really fun. Um, even people that want to take two classes at one time, they link up and say, what classes do we all want to take together for the additional class? So yeah. um, it really, you've, you kind of build your own village and community and it's, it's been great. The professors have been wonderful. The adjunct professors have been wonderful and I don't have any regrets. If anything, it wasn't that I did it sooner. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Well, um, we're going to uh, take a few minutes to, to look at some of the um, questions that were submitted to us exactly from uh, prospective students that are doing their research right now into online MBA programs or maybe any any MBA program. Um, and so Richard, do you want to speak a little bit about kind of the level of academic rigor and challenge in the, the UMass um, online MBA? I think maybe there's some misconceptions out there that the online isn't as rigorous or challenging as like maybe a full-time MBA. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, I, I, I kind of disagree. Uh, what Eisenberg offers is that, you know, having been one of the the top programs um out there they have a you know a really um a, you know as you said rigorous uh curriculum uh it's the same one that you would do as in person um so you know the misconception out there is that you know if you know you're you're not going into class then things you know you're not really learning anything that's not true at all um they at eisenberg especially they mirror their um in person classes as well so um yeah i basically got the same education that someone you know went to um, Amherst, Massachusetts got. So uh, I feel very fortunate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Nicole, you know, uh, you know, I think one of the the concerns um, with some of our uh, viewers are, you know, staying motivated when you're trying to balance your job and, and your call schedule, uh, your family concerns and all your coursework. What what's kind of kept you on the ball? What, what how do you balance that and stay motivated? Yeah, I think it's a personal drive. If it's important, you drive yourself to stay on top of it. I will say that some professors do provide a recommended schedule um, mm -hmm. for you to do your readings or do the video assignments. Um, all the in, all the classes for the modules are posted when class starts. So if you need to work ahead because you have work conferences, which is really popular, um, work conferences or you have a ballet a recital for your child. Um, a lot of people work ahead for the week and ahead of it if you know it's going to be busy because it's always posted ahead of time. Um, I like doing the weeks on schedule because it seems less overwhelming when you go with this course load. I think you can kind of reduce the fear of feeling overwhelmed when you start working ahead. It seems like a lot of work because it is a lot of work because it is a quick program. But if you stay on schedule and kind of pace yourself, and um, kind of even create your own system. Like I stay after work to do my Zoom classes. I don't try to rush home because to me, that's a little jarring. It's like, I'm rushing home. Now I have to go to school. I just yeah. kind of try to keep it chill throughout the week. And as you get used to the schedule, it becomes second nature. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Amanda, you talked a little bit about um, the residencies at Georgetown. What 
what what kind of international um, opportunities are there? Not you know maybe in residency, but also um, just from a perspective from the coursework. What kind of you know are you, what kind of global experience are you getting? Yeah, so all of our students, the online, part time, and full time in person, get to do the global business experience, which is the international consulting project. So we get to do that on campus uh, for about six weeks, and then you get to travel there in person to present to the executives. Uh, so next summer, as a student, I will get to do that with my cohort, which I'm thrilled about. We're super excited. We're already talking about where we think we're going to go and yeah. uh, what those options will look like. So yeah, all of our students do it. Um, like you all were saying, we get the same curriculum, same opportunities. My professors are teaching, um, like right now my finance professor is also teaching the full-time cohort and the part-time cohort. So it's literally the same professors and the same coursework, just different formats. So yeah, the global piece will be really exciting. Great. Well, we'll close with one final question for each of you that, um, you know, is really kind of at the crux of why people get the MBA. And that's kind of, you know, the career connections and like, you know, whether you want to stay in your own job or pivot or move, like what kind of career services are available to you as an online student? So Nicole, if you just want to, you know, kind of outline the career services and resources available at Zicklin. Yeah, um, you have the same resources that they have at the brick and mortar. So um, you still get school emails about um, different online lectures that they're having. Um, I just signed up to um, watch one about PowerPoint. <laughs> so um, you get access to all of those still. You get access to the Writing Center online. You get off access to office hours with your professors. You get the contacts from your adjunct professors. So um those are kind of the career services. They have resume building career services. So um, the the learning is still the same if it's online versus the brick and mortar. The degree doesn't say online because nothing's different. It's it's not a easier track. Um, I don't know if some people think, oh, it's online, so it has to be easier. It's not. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. the same rigor that they have. Um, the prestige of Zicklin is the same, um, regardless if it's online or at the brick and mortar in person. And actually, some of the courses, if you're in New York, I'm in Texas, um, you can take some classes in person also at a yeah. university and still be a part of the online MBA track. So yeah. that's cool, too. And are you hoping to kind of advance in your own um, job or are you looking for something else after you're, um, after you're finished? Yeah, for, um, in my role, I, I came to children for a leadership position. I'm the lead tech here now. And then there's also an opportunity to advance to a manager role in our hospital. We're expanding, which is always exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted the MBA instead of an MHA, a master's in health administration, is I wanted a degree that I can apply to different industries. Right. So um, that's why I wanted the MBA. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Thank you. Um, Richard, what, it, what about the career services at uh, UMass? Yeah, to kind of to piggyback off of Nicole, you know, same thing at UMass. Um, you have access to everything that any um, on-campus student has. They have a great, uh, it's like a kind of LinkedIn um kind of platform where you can talk to other uh, current students or alumni so you can kind of expand your network as well um but yeah you, you pretty much have the same thing as you know the the on-campus students so it's it's you know it's a great thing to kind of meet with folks uh on, you know online or in person um there there's actually on may 1st there's actually an event for the eisenberg program in boston so it's great you can, we can kind of connect with a bunch of people and kind of talk about you know share experiences whether it be online or, or in person. So yeah, I would say it's, it's, it's pretty much the same, you know, kind of um, you know, same career uh, advancements that, you know, other, other folks have. So. Yeah. Have you had a chance to really kind of engage with the, the, the network yet? And, and has that been helpful to you? So during uh, when I was uh, still in the program uh, I did, yes, I went to a couple um, of, you know, in-person uh, kind of, you know, meetups with uh, different people and networked uh, in, in Boston. So I know it's kind of throughout the, the country that UMass has them. They have them in New York. They have them uh, obviously in Boston. Um, I think Florida as well. So uh, yeah, they're kind of expanding right now. So yeah, it, it was a great experience. And anyone that's thinking about it, um, you know, I would reach out to the program. Maybe you can, you know, kind of join in in one of the networking um, events. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And Amanda, talk about at uh, McDonough. 
Yeah, so our Career Center, they have been super engaged so far. So they have, it's sort of like coursework where they start in the summer before you begin the MBA program with a webinar series. They start working with you on your resume development, tell me about yourself speech and all of that. Given that we're part-time students, it's a little bit extended because we have a little bit more time in the program, but they've already started engaging with us and giving us that career support. We have access to all the same uh, materials like other students were mentioning, you know, like uh, contacts with our alumni, um, uh, all the databases on our post-MBA placement, salaries, that kind of thing. Um, you've got peer advisors, all obviously our certified career coaches, you can meet with them via Zoom as much or as little as you'd like. So pretty much looks the same as our full-time and our part-time students. The big difference obviously is that you're not on campus. So um, some of those recruiting events that are in person, uh, you wouldn't be able to attend. But certainly since COVID, I know our employers are much more open to having Zoom uh, kind of happy hours, information sessions, that kind of thing. So uh, kind of been a perk after that, that you still have those opportunities. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, we'll just close with kind of, you know, just that, like your closing arguments, you're talking to people who are in the research phase, they're, you know, maybe on the fence about an online MBA or an online MBA from your particular school. So, uh, uh, Nicole, why don't you just kind of close us out with your final thoughts, anything we didn't cover that you really <laughs> think students want to know? Um, I would say Zickman has been a wonderful experience personally for me. Um, like I said, you get the same opportunities that kids at the brick and mortar have online. You can still get a student ID card. Um, you can <laughs> go to the library if you want to in person. You can go to recruiting events on campus. So that is something that our university offers that um, they don't really classify us as online. It's we're a part of the online component, but we are still all a Zicklin body. So um, all the things that they get in person, you can have well on online. Um, we also have an out of the country opportunity. Um, like that's an opportunity if you want to study abroad, that's offered to you part of the online MBA program. Um, you can also, again, take courses that are not a part of the online track in person, if that's important to you, if you found something that interests you. And I would say that being able to take one class at a time, um, personally, it has not shifted my work-life balance too much different than it was beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, just the time that I used to watch Housewives and, uh, <laughs> you know go for really long walks. I just now reallocate that time to doing schoolwork. So to me, my lifestyle has changed. So if you're nervous about, you know, I don't know if I can make the commitment, I think this program would really be best suited for you because you can take one class. And if you want to accelerate faster than that, you can by taking more than one course. And that's also offered. So I think that's great. Boy, thank you. Uh, Richard. So again, thanks for, for the time today. It was a really great conversation with everybody uh, and nice, you know, hearing what everyone, what everyone's programs kind of have to offer. Um, as far as UMass uh, School, uh, Eisenberg School of Management, uh, I would say if you're looking for a really top uh, program uh, in the U.S. and in the world, uh, UMass is your place. Um, if you want flexibility and something that's very accessible for you, um, again, UMass is the place is the place to be. Um, if you're looking for an innovative curriculum um, that you get the same thing as a as an in-person uh, um, student would get, you want to pick UMass as well. And if you want to, you know, kind of think uh, and meet folks uh, that think outside the box, think a little differently than everybody, um, and make you think a little deeper and little uh, a little further into things, UMass Eisenberg is your place to to go. So uh, again, thanks very much, uh, everybody, and uh, appreciate the conversation. Well, UMass should put you on its marketing team for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, tell us uh, closing thoughts about Georgetown McDonough. Yeah. So for Georgetown, you know, I think I would echo that you can do it. Um, I'm a mom of two. I work full time. Um, you can do it. You can find time in your day to do it. So if you're on the fence, uh, go for it. You can absolutely figure it out. Like you said, you might have less time for your shows, but you know, I'm still able to keep up with mine as well. So I can, I've managed to find a way to do both. So you can do it. Um, for Georgetown specifically, uh, you know, we offer that top caliber, uh, flexible environment to complete your MBA. So come join us, meet this uh, incredible community that we're a part of. 
uh, I have to put on my admissions hat too, since I'm also yeah. work for admissions and say, you know, just come talk to us. If you're on the fence and you're not sure if it's the right program for you, and I'm sure the admissions officers of all of your schools would say this as well, but just come talk to us and let us help you figure it out if this is the right program for you and the right time. So that's what we're here for. It's your first time through the process, but we've done it a lot of times. So we're happy to speak with you and help you figure out um, if this is the right one for you. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you all very much for your, your valuable time and your great insights. And uh, for all our viewers out there, you know, we have other panels throughout today and tomorrow. So be sure to come back and check all those, those out. We also have a wealth of information on the online MBA at Poets and quants.com, videos, article, so much more. Um, so for wherever you are in your MBA journey, uh, you know, be sure to do your research. And until next time, thank you very much.